Coming up on Pet Heroes, a toy poodle is doggedly determined to alert its owner to a deadly drop in blood pressure. And a house cat fights tenaciously to pull a woman from a diabetic coma. Hi, I'm Jason McCoy, and welcome to Pet Heroes. Pets can be distressed by shakeups in their owner's routines. So how do they respond when changes signal hidden medical dangers? Well, here are two inspiring tales of pets who are incredibly sensitive to the fluctuating health of their human companions. Marna Martin lives on the Fort Lejeune Naval Base in beautiful Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach is a very interesting place to live. It's uh, rather schizophrenic because we have the tourist industry, but we're also part of the largest hub of naval activity on the eastern seaboard. Marna has two children, Rowan and Kyle. I've got a 12-year-old daughter who's going on 21, I swear. My son is 10 and an absolute snuggle bug. The kids are the joy of my life. They really are. Marna's husband, Andrew, is a lieutenant in the United States Navy. His job is demanding and requires frequent travel. The Navy keeps me away from home a lot, uh, anywhere from going to conferences out of town for a couple of days to being deployed to the other side of the world. Andrew's numerous absences are a burden on the family due to Marna's serious illness. I have a very rare rheumatic condition called ankylosing spondylitis. It causes bone to build up inside my joints. It's very painful. At times, it's so difficult for Marna to get around, she has to use a wheelchair. Even when she's strong enough to be on her feet, her disease can trigger debilitating side effects. One of the side effects of my condition is called vasovascular syncope. And this means that at various times, my blood pressure will drop and I will go unconscious. I have no warning of when this is going to happen. It just hits me. I literally fall over, hit the ground, go to sleep completely unconscious for anywhere between an hour and two hours. It's happened to me when I've been in the bathtub. It's happened to me when I've been in the kitchen trying to make dinner. It had just been a matter of grace that I hadn't cracked my head open on a countertop somewhere. With her husband frequently away on business and her kids away at school, Marna finds it challenging even dangerous to be home alone. And that's where Tassie comes in. Tassie is a purebred toy poodle. People will walk by and her little head will perk up and her tail will start wagging and she hopes for people to pay attention to her. Tassie is adorable and she falls in love with everybody she meets and she is probably one of the best things that has happened to my family. Tassie is more than just another pet and playmate for Rowan's dog, Panini. She's a vital part of Marna's life. When she first met Tassie in October of 2010, Marna put her through a series of puppy tests to see how trainable she was. So I looked for one that was going to be small enough to ride in my lap and to keep me from being alone, basically. Tassie tested well and her calm nature convinced Marna she would make an ideal service dog. She's a playful, happy dog. She loves attention and loves making people smile. Tassie <laughs> immediately helps to raise Marna's spirits. She also starts earning points as a service dog. Tassie not only watches out for Marna, she becomes an early warning system for drastic drops in blood pressure. And within weeks, of Tassie coming home with me. She would start acting oddly right before I would have one of these attacks. She picked up on my problems, she responded to it. 
Marna and Tassie soon form a strong bond, with Marna reading every warning Tassie throws her way. I paid attention to what she was telling me and put it together with what was going on with the attacks and realized she was giving me between 15 and 20 minutes worth of notice that I was going to go down for a while. Dr. Connie Varnigan is a professor of psychology at the University of Alberta. She says there's a reason pets get so agitated when they sense oncoming health problems in their owner. If Tassie has seen Marna fall before and seen all the stress that's related to it, well, she doesn't want that situation to happen again. If they are tightly bonded with their human, they're able to see these changes and it can be upsetting to them. So she very quickly learns to get Marna's attention and uh, prevent a collapse from happening again. April 27th begins as a typically beautiful spring day. It was about 85 degrees outside, absolutely lovely day. It was the beginning of spring break. I had slept in later than I usually do. And my husband, Andrew, was at a military conference in Washington, DC. The Navy regularly inspects property upkeep on their bases, and Marna gets a call from the housing office. The grass in her backyard is getting too long, and if it's not cut, she faces a hefty fine. A number of the medications that I take for my condition cause me to not think very clearly, and they make me rather susceptible to suggestions with the mindset of, this has to be done. It seemed like a good idea at the time <laughs> to grab my cane and the weed whacker and hobble out into the grass and start cutting it down. But what seems like a good idea could turn out to have dire consequences. Coming up, not thinking clearly in the daytime heat, Marna misses the signals that her blood pressure is falling to lethal lows. It's up to Tassie to get her out of the sun and get help fast. It's a blistering hot day, and Marna is trying to avoid getting a lawn care fine. But moments into cutting the grass, Tassie has begun to alert Marna to an oncoming drop in her blood pressure. First thing she did was look at me, and she just had the expression on her face of, Mom, are you nuts? You know this is a bad idea. It was hot outside. I hadn't had anything to eat that day and very little to drink. She came up behind me and started pawing at the back of my knees. If I'm up and walking, that's her sign for, hey, Mom, something's wrong. Cut it out. On the verge of collapse, Marna is barely managing to stay on her feet. She really got frantic about it. She was uh, nipping at the back of my knee. She was going into hysterics. This is not normally a yippy dog. For her to be making that much noise was a sign that it was bad. Tassie is relentless and finally gets through to her owner. When I came back in, I was stumbling a bit. I was getting dizzy. I literally could not stand upright. I had to lean against a wall to make it to my bedroom. Marna's sole focus is to make it to the bedroom. She doesn't even consider calling out to her kids for help. I did not let the kids know what was going on because at that point I was thinking it was going to be my normal. I go lay down, in an hour I'll be fine. The kids have often seen their mom head to her room to rest. They have no idea this time it's life-threatening. I just kind of fell across the bed. I was losing peripheral vision, it was going black. And Tassie jumped on the bed with me. And normally she would just curl up with me and I'd go to sleep for a couple hours and wake up. She wouldn't let me go to sleep this time. Tassie. She was licking my wrists, she was biting at my fingertips. She was doing everything she could think of to keep me from going to sleep. Tassie. Tassie desperately tries to let Marna know this is not a normal attack. This is an emergency. 
I was going dark. I knew that I was in trouble. This was one of the worst episodes I'd had. Look at the phone, Tassie. Phone. On command, Tassie is trained to fetch Marna's cell phone. I managed to click in the speed dial for my husband, Andrew. I happened to check my phone to see if I had any messages, and it just happened to be I had my phone on right at the time when Marna called. Andrew calls Rowan on the house phone. Hello? And he was like, get in your mom's room really fast. She's having an attack, and she needs you to call 911. I almost dropped my phone. I was so shocked. I ran down the hallway and ran into my mom's room. Andrew talks to Rowan on her mom's cell phone, okay. allowing her to dial 911 from the house. When talking to Rowan, I just asked, you know, what does her mother look like? How is she, you know, doing? And Rowan was telling me that she was out of it, you know, just very, very groggy, um, that she was scared too. Hi there, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? And I was just there talking her through it to making sure that, you know, she told the paramedics what happened. Ma'am, we're just gonna put some oxygen on you. Paramedics race Marna to a nearby military hospital, while the children and Tassie stay with a nearby friend. What they told me afterwards was it took four attempts before they actually found any blood pressure at all. When they did, it was 39 over 27. Normal blood pressure for me is around 115 over 70. Having a reading that low, it's amazing that I survived the trip to the hospital. Marna returns home from the hospital that evening, thankful she trained Tassie well, vowing to pay closer attention to warnings. My mom is more cautious of how strenuous her activities are, and she is more careful so that nothing ever does happen. I love living with Tassie because she is my hero and my family's hero. That day, Tassie saved Marna's life because otherwise she would have just had laid down, passed out, and if without medical care, her blood pressure probably just would not have returned and uh, would have passed away probably right then and there. All diseases have a wide range of biomarkers that are associated with them. We haven't figured them out in medicine. Dogs with their incredibly acute sense of smell can distinguish many more biomarkers than we know about. So we've bred dogs uh, and supported dogs that are more attuned to us than dogs who are more aloof. So as we go over the generations and generations, our dogs are much more attuned to humans um, than we would even think th that they should be, either through scent, through sight, through sound. Tassie, oh, Tassie, Tassie is my miracle worker. I would have died without Tassie that day. Tassie saved my life. Coming up, a house cat takes charge when his owner's medical condition spirals out of control. Earlier, we saw how a dog was so in tune with her owner, she could anticipate serious drops in blood pressure before the symptoms occurred. Predicting an oncoming health threat is impressive for a trained service dog. But what about an ordinary house cat? Our next story proves that sometimes ordinary can pull off the extraordinary. Myron and Patricia Peter have been married and enjoying family life in Camrose, Alberta for 27 years. And if Myron had his way, they'd go back even farther than that. Myron and I met November 1st, 1979. And then we went out for New Year's at midnight. He asked me to marry him. I said, no, I don't even know you. <laughs> so I made him wait for another four and a half years before I finally said I do. Ever since we moved in together, we had cats. I'm a big cat lover and always have been. Greatest creatures around as far as I'm concerned. They'll listen to you, whether you're happy, whether you're sad. They're off. They're awesome animals. 
Myron and Patricia have always had a couple of cats in their home. And now that their two daughters are older and out on their own, the cats are even more treasured as companions. But when one of their animals died in 2010, their remaining cat, Max, was left without a buddy. Soon, Patricia and a friend heard about a cat giveaway at the Edmonton Humane Society. So they jumped in the truck and made the hour-long drive to the city. I was going to go get a kitty. I wanted a kitten. I didn't want a big cat, because I already have a big cat. I always think that kittens, they'll adapt a lot easier than an older cat. And we got there and all the kittens were spoken for. So I thought, well, I'll go look at the older cats. Not that I really want one. And there was this orange cat. And I went, I don't really want another orange cat. I have an orange cat. But this wasn't just another orange cat. This was Monty. And I picked him up and instantly he was purring. And he just threw his head against my chest and he started rubbing. And he's looking up at me and I'm going, yeah, okay, I'll take you home. He just kind of melted my heart. She brought him home and he was like he lived here forever and just took to her right away. It was awesome. As I've always said, you did not pick that cat out. He picked you out. Just a few weeks before bringing Monty home, Patricia was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. From the beginning, Monty sensed that she needed extra attention. There's kisses. She always takes to cats, and cats always take to her, but he was different. He was really different. He just latched onto her and hasn't let her go yet. They're together a lot. He rarely sits on my lap. Never, as a matter of fact, he's always sitting on her lap, sleeps on her side of the bed, and just pays a whole heck of a lot more attention to her. She loves that cat. I feel in a way that he's kind of here to protect her, so I'm never jealous of him. On the night of March 11th, 2011, Patricia finds out just how tightly she and Monty have bonded. Three-ish in the morning, I was awakened by pinching or biting on my fingers, on my left hand. And it was Monty was biting my hand. Monty? So then I just pushed him away, told him, go lay down, it's bedtime, time to sleep. Monty keeps after Patricia until she's fully awake. She may be up, but she's not very steady. I felt like I was really dizzy. I felt like I was going to get sick or something. And in our bedroom, we have the satellite dish that's got a light on it. So I was looking and trying to focus on the light. It was foggy and fuzzy and stuff like that. And I couldn't focus my eyes on it. My legs are shaking, and my hands are shaking, and I'm just not feeling good. I don't like to wake Myron up. He gets up early in the morning to go to work, and he's a bit of a worry ward, so or I don't like to bother him. So I got up, walked down the hall. The further she moves away from her bed, the less steady she feels. I was hanging on to the walls because I felt like I was going to pass out. And every step I took, Monty was right by my left side. He walked with me. When I got to the kitchen, I reached for the light switch. I turned the light switch on. And Monty had jumped up and sat on the end of the counter, right on top where my diabetic kit is, where I test my blood. Now Patricia realizes why Monty was biting her left hand. Being right-handed, she always performs the test on her left hand. My hands were shaking, so it was a little bit tricky to do, but I did. And he, he stayed there the whole time that I test my blood to see what it was. Then I t checked the meter, and it was 2.7, oh my God. which is low. For a type 2 diabetic, any reading under four should not be ignored. And as Patricia's doctor explains, a reading of 2.7 is seriously low. And that would indicate that she's having or struggling with a hypoglycemia at that uh, stage, uh, blood sugar having dropped. People has died from it. Low uh, blood sugars uh, is one of the aspects of diabetes that most people fear. And uh, because of the effect that it uh, has on them. She chews down glucose tablets to quickly raise her blood sugar. 
And then I went and grabbed my little egg timer from the kitchen. After you treat it, you're supposed to wait 15 minutes and then test again. And I laid down on the couch, figured oh, I could rest because I was pretty tired. When I laid down, Monty would paw at me, and he was purring really, really loud. He wouldn't let me go to sleep. Monty seems determined to keep Patricia awake until her blood sugar is back to normal. That's a good boy. His persistence in biting her finger and whatnot, I actually believe he actually stopped her from going into a diabetic coma. To me, I think he was my little hero. We've seen other cases on pet heroes of, of cats uh, um, warning their owners of different issues. Cats have very good sense of smell, and they could be noticing a difference. Cats can notice subtle changes in behavior. As we become more aware of how our animals are protecting us and supporting us in our everyday lives, we're going to hear more stories like this. It's going to become more commonplace, because after all, that is the human-animal bond, is that we help our animals, and our animals help us. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks or says, to me, you are a hero. You're my lifesaver. My girls have medals from school, different medals that they had gotten. And I grabbed just one, and I tied a knot in the ribbon so it wasn't so long. And I put it on him, and I told him that he was my hero. That's why Myron always says, he was meant to be your cat. He was meant to be here. He picked me. I'm the lucky one. <laughs> Monty and Tassie's strong connection with their owners help them detect oncoming health threats and avoid disastrous results. While it's remarkable these pets could sense trouble coming, the fact they found ways to communicate the warnings makes them true heroes. For more information, visit cmt.ca slash pet heroes.